stay adds something new for students to know two languages. A unique donation from an album to students at Central. Stores in town prepare for the holidays. And we hear from the art department as it eyes the state competition. Hi, I'm Will Allen. And I'm Kaylee Ephraimson. And, and you're, you're watching, watching Eagle Zone. Zone. Bilingual students can earn some extra recognition from the state. The Education Department is offering biliteracy seals that students can earn with their diplomas. Eagle Zones bilingual reporter JL Aviolas joins us with details. JL? The Education Department is in the first year of the program that allows students statewide to earn a seal of biliteracy then if they graduate. No English and no another language. They ran a pilot program with five school districts last spring. The, the South Dakota Seal of Biliteracy is a recognition added to the high school diplomas of students who know English and another language. The South Dakota Department of Education added it this year. It means you can demonstrate that to employers to get a job. You can include that with your scholarship applications. You can include it with your college applications. So it has a myriad number of different benefits. The seal shows that a person knows two languages, but it also shows that the student went through the hard work of being bilingual. Junior CSRT knows English and Spanish. Uh, learning the language for me, it was kind of hard because like you have to study the language a lot. The value of being bilingual is just I I incredible. Number one, it means you are a more highly educated individual. It means you can communicate with other individuals. It means you've got my mental training in how to speak another language. Students who qualify will receive a physical seal to add to their high school diplomas. There will also be an ident identifier on the student's transcript. Participation in this program is voluntary for schools, districts. Aberdeen isn't participating at this time. But Grip says students can still ask their schools to request a seal from the state for them if they know two languages. So the school district doesn't have to be offering anything in particular. If they have a student who can speak the two languages, all they have to do is contact us. So it does go through the school district to the state of South Dakota. But it doesn't require that the school district offer or have anything in particular beyond that. Whether or not students are in school that participate in this program, freshmen and adults points to the skills the program highlights by literacy. It's this year, she says, and helps find jobs because a lot of businesses are looking for adults and students that are bilingual. It provides incredible cultural and economic benefits. So if you can speak a second language, you can probably have an easier time getting a job and doing that job well. The education department has a list of languages it recognizes for the Balleracy Seal. But if you know a language that's not on the list, you can still reach out and work with the department to receive the seal. You can find more information about the Balleracy Seal on the Department of Education website, including details about tests you can take to prove you know two languages. The speech and debate team is off to a strong start despite being a rebuilding year. We shared a couple weeks ago some of the challenges the team faces being a young group this season. But they've started with the team wins in Mitchell and Sioux Falls, Washington. Aberdeen will host a speech, debate, and oral interp competition at Central this Friday and Saturday. Schools in the district are taking steps to connect with families. Here are some pictures from a family fitness night that took place this week at Simmons Middle School. This is just one event of many at school buildings throughout Aberdeen. Eagle Zone's Connor Austin is traveling to Simmons to hear more about the efforts to connect families with school. We'll share that story with you on a future show. Students at the high school have a new primary document to study after an antique gift. Eagle Zone's Brock Anderson gives us more. In Aberdeen Central 1943 graduate alumni, John Miller donated a map of the Dakota Territories dating back to 1866. This is something quite different from what we get for donations. Aberdeen Public School Foundation Executive Director Gretchen Sharp explains. This is kind of an unusual donation. We have some alumni that have things that they want their students to be able to see, but this is something unusual. A lot of times they'll support our schools and our students with finances. Um, an object like this is definitely unusual. Although the map isn't helping fund the school, it still has a lot of importance. The historical value and integrity of the map is just something that, that we don't get to see very often. We don't see something quite that old and that valuable um, in our everyday lives. And so being able to have that exhibited to our students that they can see it and look at it and study it was really a neat opportunity. This kind of donation is a great way for the alumni to connect with the students that might be curious about South Dakota history. Our alumni want to be involved with our students and that's kind of the neat thing about this gift is it was a gift that he wanted to make sure our students could experience. The map is hanging up in the CHS library if you want to take a look for yourself. 
To learn more about ways alumni can be involved, visit the Foundation page of the School District website. We're coming up to a busy time for stores in Aberdeen as shoppers prepare for Thanksgiving and Christmas. Eagle Zone's Braden Ingle King visits a store to see how they're getting ready. Ken's is preparing for a very busy month as Thanksgiving fast approaches, not to mention Christmas a month later. It's a big rush season, so you gotta have the store nice and clean and the aisles ready to go down. A lot of people get in a hurry at Thanksgiving time, so you gotta have big displays and ready for people to buy. Getting the right items that families want to buy on the shelf is just as important as keeping the store all nice and presentable for customers. And this time of year, that means turkey, ham, and plenty of fixing. Oh, and apple pie. You know, you have to think about what uh, the family meal should be, what you'd like to eat at Thanksgiving, and that's the same thing for most people. And as families prepare for the two big holidays coming up, Stores in town need to do the same as customers come through the doors ready to buy. The big thing is most things have been bought and now just to get them trucks here and get things here at the time and get the store ready for the customers to come in. When you walk into the store, the atmosphere is usually a little different during the holiday season. Sure, we start getting into the holiday music. We'll start playing Christmas music about a week before Thanksgiving. So yeah, it's just good family atmosphere at Thanksgiving time. When I was at Ken's, I asked how many turkeys they buy every year, and they didn't have an exact number for me, but they said they get pallets and pallets. According to the National Retail Federation, consumer spending on the winter holidays is ex expected to reach a record this year. That's $902 per person on average across gifts, food, decorations, and other seasonal items. The amount is about $25 per person more than last year's figure and $16 higher than the previous record set in 2019. We'll be right back after this message created by Media Production Students. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to celebrate the union of Owen Taylor Deutsch and iPhone 14 Pro Max. The couple decided to write their own vows this evening. You're the first one on my mind as I wake up. You're the last one on my mind as I go to sleep. And I feel the need to check up on you every few minutes in class. I now pronounce you husband and device. Your closest relationship should not be with your phone. Put it down. Welcome back. Three CHS athletes decided to continue their sports at the colleg collegiate level with Northern State University. Here you can see them signing their intent to compete at Northern. Addison Thorstad will head to the Wolves for soccer, Mason Shrimp with wrestling, and Patrick Severson will join the cross country and track teams. The volleyball team is headed to state after a big win in its Sodak 16 match. The team traveled to Spearfish and won the play-in game Thursday. They head to Sioux Falls for the state tournament, which runs the 21st through the 23rd. Their first opponent is top ranked and undefeated, Harrisburg. That game is Thursday at the 21st at 11 a.m. Moving from sports to another group of kids, competing Aberdeen Central Art students are hoping to show the state what they can do in an event known as Art Wars. Eagle Zone's Owen Deitch joins us to explain. Owen? In Art Wars, student artists have a set amount of time to plan and create an original work of art and compete with others to see whose artwork stands out most to the judges. Students in this Aberdeen Central Art Room will try to get their artwork in front of state judges in April during the South Dakota State Art Wars competition. They'll be using the lessons they're learning in class now, but at a much faster pace. In this setting, it's really about you know critical thinking, like they have to think instantly. They have only about five minutes to sketch down ideas before they have to start on their project. According to the SDHSAA Visual Arts Handbook for 2024 through 25, students will have between one and a half to two hours to complete artwork after receiving a prompt. There are five categories for this year, painting, drawing, clay, digital photography, and digital art or tablet. It's really fun to see them take a blank piece of paper or like a lump of clay and just make something 
instantly. The competition starts at the regional level and the top three finalists in each category advance to compete at state. This will be senior Ken Amer's second time in the competition, a competition that's grown quickly. It's so different from when I did it because there was only like five kids in clay competition. And so now since there's so many, I have no idea it's going to be a whole new group of people that I'm competing against. Art Wars is now sanctioned by the Activities Association. It hasn't always been, but as more kids join the Art Wars from around the state, our teachers encourage more kids from Aberdeen to take part as well. Um, don't be intimidated by it. It's really not that, there's not that much pressure. It's not that serious. Um, you don't really have anything to worry about. Um, just go ahead and do it, try it out. You can do multiple things. You have multiple years of high school, you can try it out. Don't even worry about it. Art Wars has been going on in South Dakota, but now the competition is sanctioned by the South Dakota High School Activities Association. The contest is open to students in grades 9 through 12 who are enrolled in their school's art class. Thanks, Owen. The regional competition will be February 21st at Northern. The deadline to register is January 24th. There's an art club and a portfolio art class where students learn to improve the skills they need for these types of competitions. Talk, to, talk with Ms. Dahlman if you have any questions about either of those. That's all for this episode of Eagle Zone. You can always watch our stories whenever you want by scrolling down to the Eagle Zone section of the school district website. That's aberdeen.k12.sc.us. With Eagle Zone, I'm Will Allen. And I'm Kaylee Ephraimson. See, See you, you next time. time.